One of the most contentious issues when it comes to fitting electric vehicle chargers is if you can put a small consumer unit inside the customer's meter box. Now this is an incredibly convenient location, especially for existing installations where it's difficult to get back to the consumer unit that could be buried deep inside the house. However, are you allowed to do it? Now we did explore that in a previous video and I asked all of the UK's DNOs for their opinion and they came back with some pretty robust advice, ranging from absolutely not to not recommended. Now recommended is certainly a gray area, especially on a box that is actually the customer's responsibility. But that option may not exist because if you open a meter box, it may already be full of equipment for the electrical supply, time clocks, Henley blocks, and there is physically no room to add a consumer unit in there. Now the NIC also weighed into this argument after we put our video out there and also came back with a absolutely not recommended to put a consumer unit in there. So what choices do you have? So we've seen contractors try to solve this in various ways, including an IP rated plastic consumer unit positioned next to the meter box, which at first appears a good solution, but then you need to think about the materials that that consumer unit is built from. Most are built from regular plastic, whereas the meter box itself is built from GRP so it can withstand strong ultraviolet light for the decades that it's going to be out there. So our plastic consumer unit might not be the best option for longevity. However, we have also seen contractors then buy a consumer unit and put it inside an additional GRP enclosure, which is a great engineering solution, but a little bit expensive. So we're quite pleased to see this new solution from BG. They've developed a whole range of consumer units for the EV installer, including this one, which is IP65 rated, but is made from die cast aluminium. And the other great thing about it is you can get it color coordinated with the BG Sync EV charger that we've fitted in a previous video. We're going to take a look at how we fit this in our little demonstration installation here to see if it's the right choice for you. Oh, wow, it's almost uh, fitted itself. Um, pretty neat installation, or oh, I think so anyway. Um, the consumer unit, a similar profile to the meter box. And a lot of these meter boxes now are also painted to match the property. So it'll almost blend in and a lot of them on the side return of the house anyway. Um, so let's have a closer look at the consumer unit itself. Uh, again, a robust design. Inside there, we can see the uh, gasket that helps us get the IP65 rating and some options on the circuit protection. One thing that isn't an option, all of these come with uh, surge protection device, uh, which is obviously a great idea. If you think your EV charger itself probably costs you a good few hundred pounds, you might want to protect that against power surges, but then think of the car that's attached to it, certainly tens of thousands of pounds. So an option I don't think any customer would refuse. Uh, in terms of the options for circuit protection, uh, you can have an RCD protecting uh, the outgoing circuits, or as we've got here, a double pole uh, RCBO just for the EV charger. The other circuit breaker there is the uh, overcurrent for the surge protection device. You can also have this uh, just with an MCB fitted to it, uh, but obviously this depends upon what protection is built into the EV charger and the cable route that you're taking to the charger itself, whether it needs uh, additional protection. So let's have a look under the cover to see how we've wired it. So to get the cover off, we just have to remove the four screws that are hidden behind these little rubber bungs that help maintain the IP rating. Another great design feature, all those screws are captive. Common with a lot of other BG consumer units, you really only need one screwdriver for most of this installation. The cover screws and all of the terminals on the MCBs, the main switch and the bus bar, all slotted posi too. Uh, we've used EV Ultra cable to wire out to the EV charger, which brings up the question of that uh, data cable and how you route that back to the meter box, uh, in this instance, to connect a current transformer. So we strip back uh, probably a meter of excess on that cable and have looped the data cable uh, from the gland out of the charger and then back down this flexible conduit and into the meter box. Uh, loads of cable entry options uh, on the consumer unit itself. Uh, we've gone in uh, underneath here. Um, it's a robust design. Again, nice gasket seal around it. Uh, even on uneven walls, this box isn't going to twist, so I don't think you'll have any trouble 
uh, making those connections. To fix it to the wall, there's some uh, screw knockouts in the back. You just have to remember to put the waterproof screw caps uh, on them when you fit the installation again to uh, maintain that IP rating. So deep breath as we go into the meter box. Again, a gray area on how you make your uh, cable entry into the meter box itself. Uh, we've gone in this corner here because there was just a suggestion uh, in the moulding of the box itself that there was a, uh, an entry point there. Um, so we've come in there with a the conduit gland. We drilled a bigger hole underneath um, so we could bring the conduit through and then a 25 millimetre hole in the top there uh, to terminate the gland. We didn't go in uh, these points here where the, uh, the, the hockey stick would come in because these are wafer thin. Um, so that's probably not the best option. We have seen examples where people come in the side, but again, you know, trying to maintain or keep water out of these meter boxes can be a bit of a challenge because what the last thing you want to do is get water on the chipboard because they just turn to uh, Weetabix and you'd need to replace everything in there. Um, so what have we added? We've added in a Henley block, so a double claw Henley block there, uh, intersecting the existing tails uh, for the property, uh, an earth block. And then we've also terminated our current transformer. So we brought in the Cat5 that's part of the um, EV Ultra cable and then made a heat shrink joint there to the two cores that go off to uh, a current transformer that you typically have to do when you've uh, got to uh, do some load management as part of the install. So while we're on the subject of tidying up our EV installs, obviously keep the customer happy. Uh, nobody wants the house looking like a factory. And now in the past, we've tried to disguise the cable fixings with these ones from D-Line here that create that almost invisible look. But one thing you can't disguise is a black cable on a white house. I think of those modern houses uh, where you have got coloured render, or perhaps you live in Balamori and you want to somehow tidy up that cable or sort of blend in to the house itself. And get your opinion on this. We've got this trunking from D-Line that's uh, yeah, normally used to hide the cables going up to the television, um, but they're suggesting it's a good idea for uh, EV charge installs where you need to blend in uh, with the render. So let's get your opinion about what you think of that. Pretty easy to install, and again, we fired through it with the uh, existing D-Line clips. You can also get this consumer unit in the interior version, so which is in, available in white, unless you've painted your house charcoal gray, that might be a better option, and it has got the same circuit protection options in there. I will leave a link in the description to the full range and check out the full install we did of the BG Sync EV charger in this video here. One of them doodahs. They always come in handy, you see these. Cleaning. 